What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology again and today we will discuss on how to deal, how to tackle or what to do at all with the negative events that astrology predicts or that the horoscope tells us that this might happen, that might happen. What to do? Should we behave like an ostrich? Well, if you do not know about the ostrich then please google it. You will know what is an ostrich. Or who is an ostrich? <laughs> you may know the ostrich, but do you know something which the ostrich does? You don't know. Don't worry. I will tell you. <laughs> Before I begin, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him when you behave. Or sorry, sorry. When you don't behave like an ostrich. <laughs> And if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to it somewhere here, there below. And if you want a personal consultation with me, then please go to my website. The link is there in the comments, Vedic Renaissance. I have been very happy after getting so many requests for consultations from different people. Great to see so many people getting benefited by an insignificant person like me. All right. So before I start speaking on this topic, it is important that I quote one of the shlokas or perhaps the only shloka which I have put in my website in the first page of the Vedic Renaissance web page. So that is the shloka which has been quoted in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam expands from the first canto till the 12th canto and it contains great insights on devotional literature and spiritual upliftment highest level of spiritual content within the vedic context is present in the shrimad bhagavatam because that book was written by the great sage vyasdev in his uh, prime of spiritual maturity when he wrote all the other books the puranas the upanishads the vedas the uh, the tantras the yantras and everything else when was over including the itihasas like the Rama and the Mahabharata and the Upanishads, 108 Upanishads, 18 um, Puranas, 4 Vedas, everything was finished and then Vyasdev wrote the Srimad Bhagavatam which means Sri Mada Bhagavatam, Sri Mada means the great, the greatness, Bhagavatam means of Bhagavat who is God himself, so it is a book it's a vast book that expands over 12 different cantos that describes Lord Vishnu and his activities with his devotees. So now, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 10th canto, Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, of this material realm, he prays to Lord Vishnu. And the prayer is one of my most favorite prayers. And it is a very beautiful prayer because... I will recite it to you now. It's very beautiful to uh, hear also when you sing it. Tate nu kampam susumikshamano bhunjan evat makritam vipakam ridhavagvapu bhir vidhadham namaste jive tayo mukti pade sadaya bhag. I want to recite it again, but due to interest of time, I will keep it short by reciting it only once. Now, what does Lord Brahma say here in this prayer? He says, Tate Anukampa Susamik Shamano. It means that he's uh, making this prayer to Lord Vishnu. He's telling, Oh my dear Lord, whoever accepts the incidences that happens to himself as his own reactions of karma. Yes, those are the reactions which are because of your own actions. And with folded palms, he says, thank you to you. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing the purport. And he rejoices in the difficulties and distress. For such a person, jive tayo mukti pade sadaya bhag. For that person, liberation mukti is his rightful claim. Lord Brahma is telling, if you do this, if you have this level of a consciousness, you can even go and claim God that, oh God, Please deliver me. <laughs> give, please give me mukti from this uh, material world. I don't want to stay here anymore. I want to go back to the spiritual world. So Lord Brahma is telling, one who 
accepts the difficulties as a result of his or her own misdeeds and with folded palms says thank you to you <laughs> he tells those people can go and ask god oh god i have done this please liberate me now is his rightful claim that's what lord brahma says liberation is his rightful claim my god you can claim god <laughs> this is this has been a uh, pray to uh, lord vishnu by lord brahma himself so now what does this mean when we start our uh, journey in astrology we will see that there are many difficult positions we may have a debilitated planet we all know where the planets get debilitated right let's do a quick reversal sun libra moon scorpio mars cancer jupiter capricorn then venus virgo saturn aries mercury pisces anybody left <laughs> rahu gets debilitated in the sign of sagittarius because you have told the devil to chant the names of god now and ketu gets debilitated in gemini because you have told the hermit that go and indulge in prostitution now that's what the sign of gemini is all about prostitution now is there any planet remaining sun moon mars jupiter saturn venus mercury everything is covered rahu ketu 4 5 6 7 8 9 yes it's covered or we may have planets in dusthanas which are the dusthanas the third house the sixth house the eighth house or the 12th house all right these are difficult houses to have planets in third house is generally the house of discomfort because it's the 12th from the fourth house of comfort that is why it's all the also the house of short distance travel it gives you some discomfort when you are traveling now there's some uneasiness or there's some kind of feeling not being at home when you are traveling right so that's what is the third house it's the house of self efforts and sixth house represents all the general troubles in life from body problems diseases then it's also the house of breakup and divorce law courts all these things enemies all these things come under the sixth house and then we have eighth house which is the house of attachment obsession addictions sexual scandals insult sudden uh, sudden occurrences accidents chronic diseases is the house of death eighth house is also the house that has the power to completely transform you into somebody who you never imagined that you will become so these are the uh, significations of the 8th house and the worst of all the houses that is the 12th house that i mean on a mundane level that is the worst house because that shows your losses hospitalization all these so 3 6 8 12 these are difficult houses from a mundane level from a mundane level which most of the people of this world are are mundane so that is why for them these houses are very difficult so what to do or we may have difficult conjunctions in the horoscope like the conjunction of moon with saturn or rahu or ketu these are very difficult conjunctions to deal with or we might have sun which is conjunct with saturn do the this is also a very difficult conjunction or we might have other difficult conjunctions like saturn venus which may give us challenges in our marital life or in finding a person or in staying committed to one person all right so uh, these are different uh, serious challenges which we might face another yoga which is very dangerous is the jupiter rahu conjunction that is known as guru chandal yoga the and on the other side there can be some terrible yogas for violence like saturn uh, saturn mars that is known as sangharsh yoga then we have mars rahu mars ke to specifically uh, the two most dreaded yogas for violence or we might have the conjunctions of saturn rahu which is known as shrapit yoga wherever this yoga is occurring and then there are different yogas like if lagnesh is with the eighth lord or the 12th lord or aspected by either of these two you know then there are different difficult yogas in the chart but the question is what to do with all those 
should you just uh, go and say that no we can't do anything now it's all destined well yes to some extent you cannot do much about them but that doesn't mean you cannot do anything at all and see when we say that yes 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 you can do things about it it simply doesn't mean that you will do things yourself no you cannot change them your by yourself but when you do the necessary remedies which are prescribed in the astrological books and when you bring a overall transformation in your life using spirituality then these yogas can be nullified may not be completely but its effects can definitely be reduced i have seen time and again recently i heard uh, one of my friend called me and told that his sister was not able to study properly and then she contacted one astrologer and then that astrologer uh, suggested her that you should uh, be chanting these mantras regularly and then when she started doing that she started studying very well and the mother of my friend told him that from the next day itself there is transformation all right so remedies work and when i say remedies i do not mean gemstones here gemstones will also work they also work somebody may tell that gemstones don't work no that's foolish gemstones work but for gemstones to work there is a prerequisite because chandra moon is the karaka for gemstones so now you may say okay my moon is exalted in taurus but still it is not working no i am not meaning position of moon here i am saying you have to be mentally stable should i repeat you have to be mentally in a good position because see gemstone what it can do it can pull the rays of the planet if some planet is uh, not very strong in the chart you want to increase its power then you can wear the gemstone of that planet i will not go to gemstones here that's a big uh, topic in itself that we will discuss some other day but what i am saying is just by pulling the rays of the planet uh, it will not give you results it is you who have to implement that power and when can you do that when your mind is strong and how does your mind get strong that is uh, by practicing spirituality by overall transforming your life from morning till the afternoon till the, till the evening till the night and throughout when you are sleeping then when you are doing all this then your overall life is improving and then with that what happens is your moon improves and then gemstones will work yes and then there are different charities which we can do then there are different procedures like this yagya which we can do there is homas then so many other rituals are there so many remedies are there so by doing those remedies and specifically the biggest remedies suppose let me give you an example suppose you have a brother who has cheated you for property so that means either your fourth house or your uh 11th house or your third house depending on which sibling it is or mars either of these four situations there will be some afflictions or some malefic planet sitting there otherwise that will not happen so now what should you do should you go and blast and try to kill or try to murder or try to assassinate your brother no don't do that because the brother is simply an instrument of your own karma the brother has simply come back to give you your own karma okay and sometimes people tell me oh so this girl she she betrayed me she cheated me and she went off with somebody else well sir i can understand that's a very difficult thing that has never happened to me <laughs> i don't know if it would have happened to me how would have uh, how i would have reacted to it maybe i would be devastated just like this person that is true but what i am saying is that is done now you cannot get that girl back and sometimes people ask me oh this person has left me will he or she come back i ask them a question would you want to stay with that person who left you should i repeat would you want to stay with that person who left you because if that person would have loved you he or she would have never left you all right because we will never let a person go who we love so we have to understand that uh, things can get very difficult sometimes in this world because lord krishna says in the bhagavad gita dukhalayam ashashvatam that this world is a place of misery but that doesn't mean lord krishna doesn't give any solution there lord krishna says that if you think of me and if you 
follow what I say. That means if you follow the word of the scriptures, you may be from any religion. It doesn't matter. You may be a Muslim who is watching this or you may be a Jew or a Zoroastrian or a Buddhist or a follower of the Bible. I don't care whichever tradition you are following. But if you follow the rules and regulations of that tradition, then all the problems of the horoscope can be mitigated. I'm not saying it can be nullified. That's not possible. <laughs> But you can mitigate it to a large extent. I have seen people doing that. Okay. And take a resolve. Whichever planet is difficult in your chart. Is in a difficult house or in a difficult sign or with malefics. Please make sure that at least from now on. You do not destroy that planet more. For example, if your Venus is afflicted. Please be very loving, caring and respectful and kind and forgiving to your spouse. Only by that will your Venus improve. In next life, maybe you, you, you are born with a good Venus. But suppose your Venus is not very well placed. If it is sitting with enemies like Moon. Or it is sitting with planets like Ketu or Saturn Rahu. And then if you are going on uh, cheating people of the opposite sex. Uh, exploiting them sexually, physically or verbally. That is not going to solve the problem. That is going to make the problem worse. Changing partners from one to the other. That is not going to happen. Or if somebody has uh, cheated on you with a difficult Venus. Then you go and uh, you try to denigrate their image. You try to tarnish their image. That will not help you sir. That will seriously downplay the planet more. You are whatever is left in that planet. That also you are destroying. So please don't do that. So please be very careful when you deal with afflictions or malefic planets or planets in difficult houses within the horoscope because uh, most of the times I have seen that we end up making the situation worse. All right. So I would like to tell you only one thing at the end that remedies do work and we have to know whom to go and also prayers will also work and depending on which planet it is we can do some donations yes and we can go and help those people who are signified by that planet for example if mars is in a difficult situation we can go and help uh, and give some donation to the army people yes because they represent mars or to our brothers if sun is the father moon is the mother venus is our spouse or women in general we can do donations on uh, fridays if venus is afflicted in our chart and these are the ways by which you can uh, mitigate. So my point here is not to tell you what to do, uh, uh, how to solve the problems. That is a different topic that has to be individually dealt. But what I'm trying to say is do not think that you cannot change your karma. Whatever you have done, that cannot be changed. But that doesn't mean whatever happens in future also is not under your control. That is wrong. Well, if that would be true, why would Parashara write uh, the books of astrology, right? It doesn't make sense because what is the use of knowing things if that's anyways going to happen? <laughs> think yourself, think if you were the great sage Parashar Muni who wrote all this, then would you be just uh, writing things and um, telling to people, okay, see, after three years you are going to have a divorce. I mean, the person will be like, what's the use of knowing, man? At least I could have lived three years happily, right? So... It's not a doctrine of helplessness. Alright. So that's what Lord Brahma says. That whatever happens. First of all. If there is some problem. Please go and say thank you to God. That thank you God you have given me this. Because I know it is a part of my own karma. You are not giving me this. People say that God is torturing me. No God is not torturing you. You are torturing yourself. <laughs> Simply go and. Uh. Pray to God that, oh God, thank you very much. You have given this to me. Even though I would have deserved worse than this. But maybe because you have some affection for me. That is why you reduced my pain. And I promise you that next time I will not do anything like this. Especially some people I have seen that they are never happy in relationships. Why? Because they have given suffering to other people in relationships in earlier lives. So th that's what they are getting back from those people in this life. So, instead of going and bitching about those people who cheated you or cheated on you very badly, 
instead of doing that instead of turning their image instead of going and denigrating them i i've seen especially girls my god if they have a breakup then they will go and completely tear off the image of their ex boyfriend they will they will say oh this person is a rascal he's a cheater he's like this he's like that well my dear ladies you can <laughs> keep keep on doing those i it, it will not affect me but let me tell you honestly it is further destroying your venus all right now that doesn't mean that you pretend that you are a yogi or you are a sanyasi or you are a paramhamsa you are a great spiritually elevated person and you don't um, uh, say anything to anybody It doesn't mean that well you can share your problems with your close ones and you can cry also there's no problem and you will cry obviously it's okay to cry <laughs> but it is uh, not very good to go and tarnish their image okay and that's the same is with the boys also if your ex girlfriend ditched you then understand my dear sir there's some homework which you didn't do <laughs> so please do not go and tarnish their image all right and approach a bona fide guru approach good astrologers who can guide you with your horoscope and most importantly in kali yuga the biggest remedy is mantras because you don't have time money and resources nor you have the pandits or the brahmins who can do yagyas so all these things are not very recommended in kali yuga they are recommended but they cannot be the prime uh, important thing which you do to get rid of your sins yes because in kali yuga life is very short lived so the only remedy which is there is mantras so if the question is how to deal with negative events in our horoscope then the answer is through mantras all right and which mantra should you chant when should you chant how much or is there any limit at all or you just can chant it anywhere anytime well that will depend individually on the horoscope and if you ask me a question now okay i have moon in the second house aspected by rahu ketu saturn mars mercury jupiter i cannot give you the answer i am very sorry on that because and i'm telling this at the end because i know after you see this video you will be writing things in the comments that oh my god how to deal with negative events okay you said with mantras now tell me which mantra to chant i cannot tell you that it depends on so many things where is your fourth lord especially where is your fifth lord what kind of a relation is he having with the lagnesh because if the fifth house is not well placed from the lagnesh then the person cannot <laughs> chant mantras i have seen for example if the ascendant lord is in the 6th house or it is in the 10th house i have seen because from the 6th house the 5th house is not very well placed unfortunately <laughs> and from the 10th house also the lagne uh, the 5th uh, house is not well placed and also from the 12th house the 5th house is 6th uh, so if the ascendant lord is in the 10th 12th or 6th house then we have to be very careful in suggesting mantras to people well this is one example i am giving you now i am not cre creating a fear that you cannot chant mantras if your lagnesh is in 12th 10th or 6th i am not saying that don't uh, uh, say that here what i am saying is this is one example of people who cannot uh, or who may have difficulties in continuing to uh, chant one mantra for long time all it depends if uh, the mantras are specific to lord vishnu then your mercury has to be strong if it is pertaining to lord shiva it has your jupiter has to be strong if it is pertaining to the mother the holy mother which is durga then your uh, moon has to be strong all right so these th there are different pros and cons and every horoscope is different and we also have to check when we give mantras that what is the situation of the fifth lord with the fourth house because fourth house is the house 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 of the heart so it should not happen that that mantra which you are chanting is taking away your inner peace so that should not happen also we have to check if all the other yogas are supporting yes otherwise if you blindly give a mantra that so and so planet is there in the ninth house that is why you should do this but what if uh, the ascendant lord is not supporting or what if the tenth lord is not supporting so you have to check the whole horoscope and after that only i can uh, suggest you which mantra to chant and which mantra not to chant all right so if you write in the comments that 
I have Jupiter in the fifth, Sun in the ninth, Moon in the tenth. I cannot answer that question, unfortunately, because that will be a full consultation. And that's what I wanted to say. You can approach me or anybody else who you know is very well versed in these scriptures or in Vedic astrology. And in general, I am saying maintain a good lifestyle. By that, your all planets will naturally improve. Your sun will improve. Your moon will improve. Be very respectful. Be very loving. Be very kind. Be very caring. Be very considerate. Be very sensitive towards others. By that, all the planets, they can improve. And there is no doubt about it. Yes, otherwise, Parashala would have not written a doctrine of helplessness. And along with that, continue your spiritual practices or at least start if you have not yet started anything. And... That's what I would want to say. Focus on the Karakas. Let me list it down at the end. Number one, spiritually improve yourself, your overall life. Number two, take those days which represent which plan which are represented by those difficult planets and do something good on those days. For example, uh, Monday is for Moon, Tuesday is for Mars, etc., etc. The number three. Take those people represented by the planets. Yes, Mars represents the soldiers, Venus represents women. Number four, take the Karakas, which uh, are represented. Venus, wife, Mars, brother, son, father. Yes. And what is number five? Number five is forgive everybody. Oh my God, that's easier said than done. But you have to try to cultivate it. See, you cannot be naturally forgiving always because... Uh, if that would happen, we would uh, go back to the spiritual world, probably. <laughs> but that doesn't mean we cannot start. So whenever you hear people telling that, oh, you should forgive others, and then you feel that, oh, how can I forgive? No, that the person is not telling you that you always forgive 100%. But at least, I'm not quantifying it into a mathematical number, but I'm saying at least try your best to get rid of the grudges. Don't At least physically, you don't do anything. Physically means don't speak or uh, try to tarnish their image. At least that you can avoid if you can. I know you can do that. Anybody can do that. Mentally, you may not be able to give up the grudge. But physically, at least you don't do. If somebody has cheated, you don't go and blaspheme them. Oh, in some public forum in Facebook or somewhere in YouTube or in some Yahoo group, Google groups. Oh, this person did this, did like that. Because then other people will... Then that person may also have something which you would not want the world to know, right? What if that person shares that with the world? Then you would not like it. So, it is not very advisable to uh, publicly tarnish somebody's image, alright? So, these are the five tips. And in the first tip, which I said, spiritually uplift yourself. In that, the mantras and all these things also come. All the spirit, uh, remedies uh, which sp uh, astrology and spirituality suggests. Okay, All the dan, tapa and all these things come. So, these are the uh, five techniques. I don't know. It's four or five. You can count it. <laughs> By that, you can know five remedies for dealing with negative events in Vedic astrology all right and by this you will know that astrology is not a doctrine of helplessness I have seen countless hundreds thousands of examples may not be thousands <laughs> but I have seen many 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 examples of people's lives changing after they start practicing the remedies okay that is it from my side I wish you good luck in finding the right person and if you want a personal consultation from me, then you can always approach me in my website. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, then subscribe to it. And also, please share this video with those people who think that astrology is a doctrine of helplessness. All right. That is not the case here. Until next time, wish you good luck with your astrological remedies, malefic planets, debilitated planets and planets in difficult houses. Wish you good luck and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.